Hey guys, how you doing? It's Dave. I wanted to make a video on a topic that's been rolling around in my mind for a little while, and that is why are some, I'm not going to say a majority, but I'm going to say a good chunk of custom knives not sharp. Why are custom knives not sharp when you buy them? That doesn't make any sense to me. I have been in this knife industry for quite a while now. I've been able to handle a lot of different makers knives. Everyone from what you see here on the right, Alan Alishowitz, to RJ Martin, to Thomas Goni, to David Lespect, to Let's see some others. Lucas Burnley. I know I'm leaving out some names. I'm just rolling off the top of my head. You have Clyde Chalinor. You have... Uh, just trying to think of a few more names. Anyway, you get my drift. Point is, though, there are a lot of custom knives that I've handled that have not been sharp and I don't understand why that is now this one is not the case this is the Alan Alishowitz M2 Tetra Lock folder you probably already know because I did show in a couple videos several actually in my top five custom knives now that is sharp. That actually, oh, I didn't show you. That is sporting CTS 204P. And Alan put a nice edge on this for me. I sent it to him. Actually, it was interesting. I bought this knife. Well, maybe for another video. I bought this knife and uh, on the secondary. And uh, he had to tune it up because the gentleman I bought it from was unfortunately dishonest in his dealings with the knife. So anyway, have you guys handled knives that, excuse me, custom knives that have not been sharp directly from the maker? And that's something that bothers me. I mean, I can understand a production knife not being sharp, you know. I could understand potentially, which is rare, but I've, Rarely had a spider co that hasn't been sharp. There was one time, a very long time ago, very, very long time ago, probably 10 to 15 years at least, uh, I had a spider co that was not sharp from the factory. But it's about the only time I can remember. Every other one of them is very sharp from the factory. Uh, you know, a bench made or, you know, whatever your fancy is, a boker. I can understand production knives. I can certainly understand that because they're made in a high capacity assembly line type manufacturing process. You know, there's going to be mess ups, there's going to be lemons. But when a custom knife maker who is doing these not in batches, not in an assembly line production, he's not doing them in a mass production setting. He's not making thousands upon thousands of knives at a time. No. It's a one-man show. And how come some custom knife makers can't sharpen their knife properly? That's like a biggest pet peeve of mine. And I don't know if you guys have experienced that as well, but it's something that I just wanted to share and also ask for your feedback if you have handled any custom knives that have not been sharpened. Now, you've seen this one before too, but the Conigarius, okay, beautiful DLC, carbon fiber insert in the back, show scale, beautiful, just beautiful, absolutely stunning. And this actually is, action is even a little different than my other Koenig. That I uh, sold. But anyway. 
That's not a custom knife. It's a high-end production knife. However, it is made just as good, if not better, than some custom makers. But neither here nor there. Have you guys experienced this? Is there a reason why a custom maker who was making one knife at a time couldn't take the time to sharpen the knife properly? Now, I'm going to say that I am not a knife maker. I'm just an enthusiast. And sharpening is not my forte. However, I'm not experienced in that way. Uh, that's something that's this is just a hobby for me. For them, that's what they do day in and day out. They're supposed to be professionals. They're supposed to be seasoned. They're supposed to understand all the moving parts and the working parts of a knife and make sure that it's completely flawless, for lack of a better word. <laughs> it's funny. It, it makes me think, too, of a American knife that I handled. Custom knife maker. I believe his first name is Kurt. Kurt American. I think it's like M-E-R-R-I-K-E-N. And he actually... Well, let me just open these up for you. Give you something to enjoy looking at. Rather than just closed. This is the titanium nitro pen made by Tactile Turn. The nitro is the seasonal release that Tactile Turn made. Slim side click. And I heard some of these slim side kick, uh, clicks, excuse me. Uh, had issues, but this one was actually flawless, so very nicely done. I like the little coffee mug as well. It's just very nice. Oh, you can see on the inside of the clip, is it here? I don't know if I can get it to focus. Let me put that box down. Tactile Turn 2023. Very nice. Just beautiful. Beautiful machining. And you can see the line right there, but it practically disappears. I mean, they're machining between the tip and the rest of the body of the pen. The machining on these is so, so nicely done. It really is. I mean, yes, this is Cerakoted, but, you know, all of their knives come with, like, this ribbing, the way that they machine the titanium. And it's truly fascinating. It's truly beautiful and... Highly, highly well done. It's extremely good quality. Highly impressive. Oh, I think I uh, went on a tangent, so my apologies. But getting back. So in regards to not having a sharp custom knife. So... It made me think, actually, of another thing where I remember I was at Blade Show and I don't think it was a friend of mine that I know there, but I think it was, it was you know, just some random person, nice, pe nice guy, but uh, he was showing me some of his pieces and I was showing him some of mine and we got to chatting because that's how Blade Show is. It's a great time. If you've never gone, you got to go. It's a blast. Absolutely worth the three-day trip. Anyway, he and I were chatting, and he showed me his Kurt American, the, I think it was the Ultimatum, the Mini Ultimatum, whatever that model is that he makes. And it's a beautiful, beautiful knife. I think it's just a very interesting design, very out of the ordinary. You know, it's really unique in its own right. However, and the action was nice. There was a lot of things that were very nice about it. And I'm just looking it over, and I see when I close, excuse me, sorry, when I close the blade into the handle, you know, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, 
Obviously, not this, because this is... And the blade isn't centered. Now, this is centered beautifully. But I'm looking at this knife, and I'm like, this ultimatum isn't centered. <laughs> and I think, if I'm not mistaken, those go for mm, maybe seventeen, eighteen hundred. Uh, they might go for more depending on the materials he uses. I mean, his was this guy's uh, probably. If I had to guess, I don't know exactly what steel American uses. I don't have any of his knives. Uh, but regardless, it was, you know, whether it was something like Magna Cut or even RWL 34, it was something simple. It didn't have a fancy pattern welded Damascus or uh, there was no Damasteel, nothing like that. You know, it just... Uh, I think it had some like polished G10 or micarta and um, a couple of unique colors like a turquoise and something else, but from my memory, what it serves me. I was just, I was really baffled. How do you have a custom knife that you buy and it's not centered? I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's happened to me before. Uh, and I've either sold them or I've kept them, depending on the maker, depending on uh, if the lockup is solid, if the action is still good, how much do I like the knife, do I dislike it? There's, there's factors. I mean, there's, 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 uh, there's times where I make an exception. But generally speaking, no, I don't. I don't, I don't think that if you're spending that kind of money on a knife, that it should be uncentered. And I would say, now that I can think about it, I think I've sold every knife that has been uncentered, or it hasn't been centered when I had it. I, I'm trying to think right now. I don't have my collection in front of me entirely, but I do believe I sold just about every one of them. So I guess hence the point that it really does bother me and I think it bothers a lot of knife guys <clears throat> how could you have a custom knife like I said production knife a little different you know I don't like having those on centered either but that's a little more acceptable you know you can tolerate that but a custom knife really not acceptable they should make sure that blade is centered if it's not centered like uh, one of my custom friend, uh, custom knife maker friends told me, I'm, I'm not going to use a word that he used, but an expletive <laughs> that he pointed out. Uh, he's like, it's crap, you know? And if it's not centered, if it doesn't go back together the way that you, when you took it apart and it goes back together the way uh, that it was when it was first put together, it's crap, you know, like, and honestly, he has a very, very valid point because if the machining is as good as it's supposed to be, everything should line up as it was from the beginning. Everything should work and function correctly just as it was from the beginning. I know a lot of people love Chris Reeve knives because of that very reason. They can take the knife apart, put it back together, and it's exactly the way that it was centered and everything else. I never did that with my uh, 31, but that's what I have been told and seen. Uh, so, you know, it's just one of those things. How could you have a knife that is not sharp? from the maker, from the custom maker? How can you have a knife that is dull? How can you have a custom knife that is not centered? The blade's not centered. I mean, something's off. Something's off in the grind or, you know, and it could be possible maybe the sharpening was off. I know uh, my Gafco that I had, it was actually centered, but the grind was off. Uh, so that 
was interesting because when you looked at it, it looked practically centered, but it looked ever so slightly off, but it was just really the grind. So that I made an exception for because I also, I also know that uh, Michael Gavick, I believe, is one of, the, one of those makers who does a lot of things by hand. I don't know if he uses any CNC uh, or CAD. I don't know if he uses any of that. I think he's more of a, one of the older school makers that uses a lot of, a lot of uh, hand tools and things like that and machines that don't require you know, all the new fancy techniques through computer-generated products. You know, that's what I love about Alan's work as well. He doesn't use anything that is uh, involving CAD and CNC, uh, which I don't mind. I'm just making the point. I think it, it goes to show the, the quality, the brevity of the maker that that really goes to show how well his work can be without the other alternatives. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, anyway, I think that was basically all I had on that topic, on that subject. But, you know, we knife guys, we have pet peeves, and some of them are warranted. Uh, you know, not having a sharp knife when you buy it new is unacceptable, but especially a custom knife. Like, there's no way you should go to, uh, go to a website and buy a knife and it comes to you unsharp, you know, whether that be from like Arizona Custom Knives or, uh, you know, E-Boss Hoss is another one. Uh, recon one, whatever the case is, you know, there's no reason, absolutely none at all. There's no excuse for that. So custom knife makers who are not sharpening their knives properly, you need to do so, you know, custom knife makers who are not affirming that their blades are centered down the middle between the handle scales, between the liners, you need to make sure of that. Uh, people are paying a lot of money to make sure that that knife is, like I said, flawless, you know. Um, there might be a couple imperfections, maybe intentional, but, but no, generally speaking, people are not spending thousands of dollars on custom knives just to have something wrong with it. Uh, I know a lot of collectors who would not tolerate that, just as myself. Just don't. You know, would you... This is a little drastic as a comparison, but would you... <clears throat> excuse me. Buy a new car with a rip in the seat? No, you wouldn't. Would you buy a new car with, uh, you know, a cigarette stain, you know, if someone put their butt out in that seat? No, you wouldn't. It's ridiculous. So, anyway, I think I've rambled long enough. Just wanted to share that. And, uh, yeah, so you guys have a nice evening, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.